Hello and welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and today we're going to be talking about how to practice improving our practice, improving our magic and how we approach all of that stuff because I think that is the stuff that makes a profound difference to not only our skill but also our mindset and all that stuff which we will be going into in a minute. Uh, before we do that, can you please like, subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course. If you want to learn from me, if you like the review show, you will love the course. It's an absolute bargain. You get everything. All of the different courses on that, my lecture, the Royal Road course, the How to Practice course, which we'll talk about in a minute, and of course, the live sessions. Uh, so that's cardmagiccourse.com. That was very succinct, wasn't it? Wasn't it just... It was all succinct and professional. <laughs> I realise I do tend to waffle, which I know is okay sometimes, but it's good to not waffle sometimes and actually get, get to the point. See, I'm taking all this feedback, even from the, all that. Um, so uh, the reason I'm doing this is because a while ago you all gave me some lovely comments about, uh, about what stuff you'd like me to talk about. And I was doing this thing on Mondays which was the what I've been playing with at the weekend, which I'm still going to do, but I want to... It seems like a lot of people, are like me, are kind of theory junkies. They love to know about the approach to magic, the approaches different people make to magic, and practice in general, and skills, and everything, and even life. And I think it's really important, and I think we don't take it seriously enough. I think, actually, it's more important than the other stuff, because if we let, get this foundation right, and we know we kind of work on our approach, then the other stuff things just tend to fall into place a little bit more. And it's the thing that definitely changed my life when I really understood how I functioned and, and my healthy responses to things and my unhealthy responses to things. And, and it's kind of what got me over the hump because I'm someone that struggled greatly with a deck of cards, with a coin, everything. None of this stuff came easy to me. And I'm not saying I can, I'm amazing or anything, but I can kind of handle myself with, with these things now. So I, I really think it's, you know, when I look at what I want to do... Um, is I want to kind of be able to share what I've learned at the age of 47 so you don't have to waste the amount of time I did with certain things. So th this is a practice thing. Now this is, you know, it's not like a really rehearsed thing. So I'm happily asked questions uh, in on future comments on comment sessions on the Thursdays. So do remember to come at 5 o'clock UK on Thursdays where I will be answering a lot of your questions. I uh, can't do all of them, obviously, but I'll kind of pick a few and answer them. So, brilliant. So, if you've got any questions now, make sure you get them in the comments. Please, like I said, like and subscribe. makes all the difference. But this was motivated also by... I was watching Modus that I, uh, I reviewed recently from Danny Goldsmith. And he, like me, is someone that talks a lot about the kind of neuroscience of practice and, and how we practice. And, and sometimes when you say that, you know, the neuroscience of practice, some people can think, oh, we're going to get very academic now. And it's not very academic at all. It's actually, I'm a lay person, I'm not a scientist, uh, as Danny is, of course. And so we, we, we learn this stuff and then we put it into our own lives, we apply it, uh, and then hopefully share it in a way that we can all understand that's relevant to our magic. So I was watching uh, Modus, and then he's got the how to practice thing at the end. And I was like, well, I've got a course on how to practice. I'm into this stuff. And it's great. And then talking to him uh, was lovely about similar things. We had a conversation for the first time the other day. And I, this weekend, it inspired me to look at my practice a lot. To, to, and, and it's a kind of case of practice what you preach. Because I'm also a coach, you know, I coach this stuff. And not just with magic, with business. Uh, I talk to people about how to approach things, you know, allow them to come up with their own stuff. Not, it's not about me telling them, but... And uh, I thought, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm approaching my practice in a kind of rushed way. And what I was doing is I, I wrote a blog uh, back in, the, I think it was in the summer, wasn't it? About, I was working through the, the um, Steve Forte books. And it was going really well. And, and, I've, and I kind of let it go for a bit because I had lots of stuff to review and, and went back to it. And, and then it became important for me to, to just get through it. I had this weird mindset. I've, I've got to get through that because all these books were arriving to review and all these books that I bought that I didn't need because I'll never read all the books I've got anyway, um, but we love them. And I was thinking, I can't... I'm, I'm, getting, I'm doing this in the wrong way. I'm doing, getting through this book thinking, if I learn everything from it, I'll be really good at it. But I was realising that the stuff that I was learning, some of it wasn't sticking. So this weekend, I went back to it in a mindful way. I, I kind of opened the book and I thought, it's not about getting through anything. It's about sitting with this and 
doing it as slowly as you can and understanding that to go fast, you've got to go slow. It's like learning a Rubik's Cube. If you rush that learning process and you want to get one of those guys that's super quick, which I'm not, you're going to have to start understanding how it, how it works and really nailing those patterns down. And the only way to do that is to do it very slowly. And when you do it slowly, what happens is the speed and the fluidity will come after that, but you've got to lay that foundation of knowledge. And if you rush through that stuff, what you do is you kind of learn a version of it. And you pick up bad habits. And, and what I'd realized is I went back to this stuff and I was learning, you know, something I've put on this course back at, in 2013 was the Up the Ladder Cut. I've been doing Up the Ladder Cut for ages, but I realized reading Steve Forty's book that, I, that there are better ways of doing it. And I was thinking, well, I've got a choice here. I can do it as I'm doing it and get away with it, which you can, like a card man, as he said, like a, like a magician, or I can really geek out on it. So I just experimented and really enjoyed it. Just had the loveliest time. All of a sudden getting through it or getting it nailed wasn't the thing. It was just about being in flow, about doing this thing. And then all of a sudden it started getting better. And, it, and what I started doing was it, it, this um, up the ladder cut, okay? So you can do a, an up the ladder cut, whoops, like that. Don't do it like that. Um, there you go, like that, all right? So I always get a little bit more nervous when I'm live, but the, but the normal up the, cut, up the ladder cut has got these big kind of things and it's fine from the front and you get away with it. But then I was reading his stuff about it and there are ways of doing it that make it a lot better. So, so I was kind of doing them before I read it, and I, but I was still trying to get up to that speed. And what I started doing was really, I mean, I'm talking about this slow, right? So I was running through it this slowly. It's, it's hard to do now, slow. And all of a sudden I found myself, A, enjoying it more, and B, starting to really nail in the, and this was only a couple of days ago, so I haven't got it yet, but it, but it making it look totally different. And so actually looking at what it's supposed to look like, rather than just doing an up the ladder cut, actually looking at what is that supposed to look like, and thinking about it, you know, and, and all of a sudden I spent hours, you know, and it's like a, like a push through as well you know what is that supposed to look like what can you do to it and I started understanding it I think more than I than I ever have but and, and you think and I think well, why do we avoid doing that because I think we think it's going to be boring we're so used to kind of you know we want it we see people doing it at speed if you watch the Steve Forty stuff and go right I want to do that and we kind of learn a version we can get away with it so the first thing is I want to say really and this isn't, you know, this is something that, that was inspired with what Danny said to me. And by the way, I've got a link below and Danny is getting, this is not, I'm not affiliated in any way. Danny's giving away a free vanish because I was looking at his stuff and really enjoying it. And he's got a, a free vanish and click the link and have, have a go. He's not someone that spams people. So obviously you get the free vanish put in your email address, but he doesn't, you know, he only sends you good stuff. Um, and he's not going to, like I said, spam you because I've done it and I haven't got any spam. But have a look at that because, again, it, it's someone, he's someone that takes you through it with that speed. And I think his stuff is really good. The vanish he teaches you isn't knuckle busting. It's a really lovely vanish. But, but do have a look at that. I think before I share that because it's a, it's a really good thing. Um, so the, the next thing is, is to ask ourselves why, why we don't practice enough. What is it that stops us practicing? And, I, and for me, there's a couple of things. There's a lovely book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, and if you don't have to read the book, I mean, I'd really recommend it, but if you go on his website, jamesclear.com probably, um, you, but look at Atomic Habits, James Clear blog, and he talks about motivation, and he talks about the difference between goals and process. And what, we, what we're not very good at, most of us, is doing activities that don't give us any short-term gains. So if you think of going to the gym, it's a really hard thing to to do, first of all, to get out of your comfort zone and go, because we've got all those other things that we might be hard, it might be scary, we've never been before, all that. But even when you've been to the gym a lot, it's easy to fall off the wagon because you don't see that instant thing. You kind of do in the first week because you feel all that buzz of, you know, of going, but soon you kind of start to plateau. And people always say, how do you get over that plateau? How do you get over that thing of going, I'm not feeling any benefit now and still motivate yourself to go? Well, the way you do it is you forget about the goal and you concentrate on the process. So with, if you're learning, you know, something with cards that you're finding very challenging, 
you might sometimes I do stuff and I go right I'm really getting this I'm getting this really quickly and then all of a sudden and this happened with the Zaro shuffle funnily enough the, the Zaro shuffle is something I've only just started looking at again because it was sloppy I was get, again getting away with it but it was kind of not looking great and I went went back to it and for a long time there was no improvement so I'm thinking it, it just became such a, a difficult thing it just wasn't getting better but the process is you turn up you do that how many minutes a day? It can be 10 minutes a day. It doesn't have to be a big five-hour session. There's an hour for 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day or whatever. Forget about it getting better. Forget about what it's going to look like. Forget about, I've really got to get it. It's just work on it. That's it. And what happens is the other stuff falls into place. The problem is sometimes, again, it's like losing weight. If you get overweight, which I've been many times in my life, it's such a big mountain to climb. You know that that involves 200, 300 gym visits, changing your diet. That as a thing in front of you is a very difficult thing to deal with. Saying I'm going to turn up three times a day to that place isn't quite as difficult. So if you think about the difference there and what you do every now and then you check back in with your goal. So you've really got to make your goal. Don't get me wrong. You've got to have purpose. You've got to understand why you're doing it. And the purpose for this arrow shuffle, I'm understanding that I want to be able to do something that's really powerful but do it in a way that is impressive not just to my audience actually to my peers as well because I'm planning on doing more conventions and I you know I've got a card magic course I don't want to be doing sloppy shuffles so there's a lot there's all this kind of motivation now so you check in with that you then do the process make the plan put it in your diary we don't do that do we we put all the other stuff in a diary but we don't do sit down and do this and if it's important to you that's enough and then we just concentrate on it and we we don't rush forward and it's avoiding this kind of rushing forward that's the problem. I'm just going to go to the um, uh, the comments. How do you break your deck in helps you motivate yourself to practice? Right, hopefully we'll be looking at the motivation yourself to practice and me it's breaking a deck in I just I just use it that's it shuffles cuts um, I don't have anything. Hi, hi Thedmail, hey Manish, how you doing? Oh Paul is good over in India. Hey Jake uh, best way to carry big stage illusions? Well, I've no idea because I haven't got one. And there's a reason why I haven't got a big stage illusion because I've got me bothered to take <laughs> carry them. A van, I would think. Uh, learning slowly, bit by bit. Absolutely. I literally had this type of thought over the past few days. Instead of trying to learn everything in a book, I'm picking two or three controls. Two or three, absolutely. You, you can't do too much. Magic interviews, how you doing? Good to see you. So, it's the process and not the goal. I'm just kind of looking at my notes here. Oh, I'm actually remembering it all without looking. That's good. I love this idea of we have to, I'm going to share something with you in a minute that from, from the course, we, that we have to progress, we have to regress. It can be really frustrating to take a step backwards. And I really suggest you change your mindset and think about regression as an enjoyable thing to do. So, you know, the, you know you're learning a really good new slight and you might be struggling with a certain thing. Maybe it requires a push-off double or something like that, and you can't do a great one, but you, you're learning this slide that involves this push-off double and then goes into someone else, and you keep going. And it's so hard to go back and just go, right, actually, let's look at that push-off double that I started practicing eight years ago that is good enough in most situations, but not, not in, in the context of this slide. So it could be something like maybe you're learning a push-off second deal or something like that. So, or the master push-off, you know, Andy's thing. So when we go back and, and we just look at that thing, what happens is something interesting. We go into flow a lot of the time, you know, put some music on, do whatever. You know, we go into flow and what seems to be so tedious actually isn't tedious because we, we forget actually about that slight and we go back to that thing. And then what you're doing is you're going back to conscious competence. You're, you're going back to, you know, when you can do something that's good enough without thinking about it, actually looking at it and thinking about it, being conscious about it, and that builds up that foundation again. And then we bring it back to our our habits and it kind of it reinforces that new habit if you see what I mean. If you don't understand what I mean, do ask a question because that, that wouldn't be your fault, it would be mine. So I'm just going to share something with you um, from the course. It's a model that I developed and people say they developed it. It sounds very good, doesn't it, develop? But I sat down and worked it out and it's based on a lot of stuff I knew and I'm only going to bang through it. I go into this really in detail on the course. It's not a marketing exercise for the course. Well, I suppose it all is, I suppose, in, in a way, isn't it? But um, it's, I'm just going to have a look at it. I'm going to start it. I'm, I'm going to try and pause it. Um, why won't that pause? That's sad. I'm just going to, oh, there we go. Um, 
So this is what, and this is basically what we think about when we practice. We just tend to think about the last bit, which is training. We think about the sitting down and doing it. And this is something that I came up with based on a lot of different reading I've, I've done and based on my own work with leadership training and you know, behavior change and things like that. And what I think if we, we can do is if we consciously think about this stuff, and I don't mean look at it and read it and go, um, oh, I've read it now, I've learned it. I mean, sit down and work daily applying it. There's, there's a, a great thing I heard from Seth Godin the other day. And if you, you don't know who Seth Godin is, he's got a lovely book on creativity that's just been released. I can't remember what it's called, but um, Google him, Seth Godin. Got a great blog. He was talking about this this idea of you don't actually learn anything by listening to people. You don't learn anything in school. You don't learn anything by in a lecture. What you do is you gain information, but you, you only learn it by doing it, by using it, by applying that information. So all this stuff now, you know, it's, it's fine me saying it to you, but next, it's actually thinking about it when you're doing the thing, actually when you're approaching your practice physically, when you're going to sit down thinking about this stuff and, and trying to create habits of thinking about it. Because those thoughts are what, are what go into into our behaviours, it's our thoughts and, and our emotions that sort of that make us act in a certain way. So with motivation, now this is the big one, and this is answering Gary's question. It was Gary, yeah. Um, the, I've got four parts of this, and there's loads of different ways of looking at it, but the first, one of the big motivators is, um, is the purpose, like I said, and obviously I've talked about creating the, the process, but you need that initial motivation, you need to be able to learn the thing. And the purpose is really checking in with remembering, you know, how magical it felt to actually actually learn, you know, see that thing in the first place. Because sometimes we can get very so used to magic, we forget how magical it is. So, you know, or showing someone a trick or, or that response that we get. So what's the purpose? Why are you learning it? You know, and is that purpose a healthy one? Or is it, are you just learning it because you think it can look good to other people? Or is there something deeper? And it looking good to other people might be fine, by the way. That's, there's no... Um, the other way of getting motivation is inspiration. Find inspiration. If you're not feeling in inspired, find it. Listen to podcasts. Look outside of magic. Listen to thing, people like Seth Godin. People talk about creativity. Um, there's a book I've just bought by Twyla Tharp. She's a dance choreographer about creativity, and it's so inspiring. So I know everybody says look outside of magic, but look outside of magic for those things that inspire you. You, you know, There's no point in learning anything if it bores you. So, and you, you only do that through through experimentation. Maintenance, you know, how do you maintain that motivation and how you think about that? Again, it's, it, motivation isn't just going to happen. You have to work at maintaining it and checking back in with that goal is one way of doing it. Um, there's loads of different ways of doing it and, and knowing what your goal is. Your purpose is a kind of thing that drives you towards your goal. The goal is the thing itself. And like I said, check in with it because you might change your mind. With the approach, mindset, it's this is huge, and I'm not going to go into it now. I'll do another video on mindset, but you know, understanding that it's about effort, it's not about talent. Yes, some people will pick things up quicker, but if you've got the right mindset, and I don't mean just high fiving each other, being you know, being positive, but actually knowing, being realistically positive, and going, actually, there's no reason why. If I know the physiology of practice and how people get better at things, there's not much reason why I can't do this. There's probably a lot of stuff in me psychologically that is stopping me doing it or believing I can do it. So it's self-belief, but it's self-belief actually based on something. And I could go on about that for hours. So you can work on this. This is all learnable. It's something that, that changed my life when I started working on this stuff, because I had a horrific lack of self-belief, which does come up every now and then, um, every now and then. Awareness. This is actually being aware of how you respond to things, being aware of what you need, being aware of where you are now with a skill and not fooling yourself, getting decent feedback off people you trust, you know, admitting that you might have been doing a slight for three years and it's actually you, you're flashing all the time, which was what happened to me, and going back and doing the work. Confidence requires work. It doesn't come straight away. It's very scary doing a magic trick. So learning that confidence is, is something you can develop. Knowledge, have you got enough knowledge for the trick you're learning? Have, do you have to go back and learn something? Or have you got too much? You know, have you been procrastinating because, because you, you think, you know, it's, I've got to get me that thing, I've got to get more because that'll be comfortable when I know more. And sometimes, you know, you've just got to go out and do it. And then you keep practicing, then you gain the knowledge. And then it's the sitting down stuff. This is what we tend to be a bit better at, but it's carving out the time, being serious about that, you know, if it's important to you, you don't have to justify it to people, you know, but you kind of, it can't get in the way of life as well. It's great to sit down and go, I'm going to do five hours a day, but if that's going to 
have negative consequence, it's not going to work for you. It's got to be a joyful thing. But all, sometimes it might be difficult. Um, but once again, you make that process, you make that commitment, and you, you do what you can to stick with it. Environment, are you in the right environment? Are you trying to work a thing out where you've got to have the perfect environment? Because you can practice with cards anywhere. If you haven't got a close up mat, use a bit of carpet. You know, you can do a riffle shuffle on that. We make excuses to procrastinate and we can, you know, but, but, but if you want to do those long sessions, you know, music you listen to, is there something that's going to keep you at it? Resources, again, have you got enough stuff? Have you got the, the thing to shuffle on? Have you got a rubbish close-up mat, which is really hard and making it miserable? So it's, it's all the stuff, getting the resources together. And also, again, like I've got here, but with the training, you know, going back and reflecting, how, right, now I've started training, do I have to go back and do I have to look at knowledge again? You know, did I think I had enough and I haven't got enough or did I have too much and I've got too much in my head that I have to simplify? So that's a big kind of whistle-stop thing. And like I said, I go into that in a huge way in the, in the course, on Car Magic course, which you get, you know, as part of your subscription. But again, it's not, you know, I'm, not, I'm trying to um, just give you the, the sort of bones of it. But you can take that. And I suggest pausing that when you watch it, if you want to watch this again, writing it down and really understand what that means to you. Um, I'm learning Pharaoh right now, just doing a few Pharaohs every day. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Pharaohs are something, I just did this course on, on the Comanche course on Pharaohs and it was so nice to be able to do it because I wanted to do one for ages and my Pharaoh just wasn't good enough. It wasn't consistent enough. So I didn't feel like I could, I could teach it. So it's so nice. And I gave up on it. I gave up on it and then I realised the reason why I wasn't doing it is because I hadn't, practiced it enough I was doing doing it once every now and then and going oh I'm not gonna and actually then I sat down and did like a half an hour at a time while listening to something again or watching tv even and and it started coming together and, and I did all that stuff I kind of looked at it um, slow and steady wins the race absolutely uh, great advice on the atomic habits lovely book it's a great book isn't it I think it's really good stuff it's simple all this stuff is simple we just don't do it you know, we, know, we kind of know it, but we don't do it. But the, what makes us do it is to actually, again, consciously think about it. We don't do that fleeting thing of, oh, yeah, I should do that. We actually sit down and treat thinking and making notes and those things as part of the process, just as important as getting the cards out and doing that. And that, you'll find, will inspire you. In the way, you know, a little conversation with Danny, watching his thing has kind of brought all this stuff back. And I sat and I learned his vanishes in that really slow way and it was just it was it was meditation you know it was, it was lovely um hi steve i thought today you're going to do an, an in-depth q a on the shadow wallet no uh, my q a's are on thursdays um it was probably my fault that i probably said it wrong on that thing so i'm so sorry yeah i do the comments on comments on thursdays that was probably because i got the video out later than i thought and in my head i thought it was thursday so i'll be talking doing the comments on comments section on Thursday and that'll have stuff on the shadow wallet on it. I do apologise. Um, where do I put my little thing? <laughs> uh, I Steve, best trick so far for 2021. I think I've got it now and I haven't reviewed it yet. I'm, I'm going to do some reviews. Um, this, I'm tempted to say summit just because that gets everybody upset, doesn't it? <laughs> um, uh, so, but I will, uh, it's, it's so hard, isn't it? That, I mean, what have I reviewed so far? I think I love the shadow wallet. I've got it here. You know, I'm walking around. This is now, that's it. You know, it's, it's, I've done it. I've done the peak. And it's just glorious. Um, so that's, that's a kind of bit. I can't get him back in the pocket now. I don't know why it matters. I'm sitting down on it. Um, a lazy man does most work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 10 days count until pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and they so will um, reply to your other thing as well. Okay, so uh, listen, I hope that's helpful. And, and like I said, any uh, comments you've got or questions, obviously I can only answer so much. So if I don't get to them, please don't be offended, but I'll do what I can. But do comment. I do read every single one. That's what I do. You know, it's very important to me and I don't take it for granted. Um, but if you, like, if, if you want to look at any more of that, there's, there's loads of stuff on the card course. And I talk about this in the live sessions. You can ask any questions in the live sessions on the course as well. Um, and it is, of course, only 9 99 uh, a month, which is if you think of it's one coffee a week, and that gives you pretty much everything I know and, and everything I'm still learning and developing as well. So, uh, any complaints that the Shadow Wallet isn't in leather or, or no, no, the Shadow Wallet's leather. There's a leather one and a, and a um, carbon fiber one. 
So, uh, yeah, it's, it's lovely leather. So that's, yeah, that's cool. Uh, very helpful, Steve. I play the violin in quite a high standard, so you made me think about transferring what I know about practice from the realm of music to magic, uh, Julian or Julian. Uh, it, without a doubt, this is... I'll tell you a little story, right? I don't want to bang on too long. I was crippled with lack of self-belief as a kid, and I think part of it was... Uh, having an older brother that was quite cool and everybody thought he was cool and, and that wasn't his fault he wasn't a bad person he didn't bully me or anything like that well not anymore that older brothers do bully you um, but I really really it kind of I was I always felt and looked up to him and thought I was into, couldn't do all the stuff I wasn't sporty I had nothing I didn't do anything you know I was one of those kids that didn't I was, I was not really into anything and my mum I talk about this in my talk that I do my mum came back one day with this breakdance you can do it video this VHS video I might have told this story before um, and uh, and I put it in and I was did, had nothing to do I was, I was kind of 11 years old I think or something and it was a person teaching breakdancing and that was what cool people did right so I was probably sort of des trying desperately to be cool I knew my brother was into breakdancing uh, and I tried I couldn't do it I couldn't do it it was I, I had no athleticism about me and then all of a sudden I was at school and I don't know how long much time had passed and I wasn't really, it wasn't like I was trying to do it. I knew, I, I kind of, I just concentrated on the process. I was having a lovely time. I had a little bit of lino my dad got me and I was trying to spin on my hand with a, with a dishcloth, all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and I was at school and I, I popped a breakdancing move. I did a caterpillar, right? It's, they call it the, the, the worm and stuff like that. And uh, where your body kind of does that across four. And I just tried, we were all trying it and not doing it. And then all of a sudden I did it. And I just got up. I remember that. I always remember it of just kind of thinking as if it came from nowhere. All of a sudden it was like, it was magic. I had this skill. And from that, I think because I was at that LA age, 11 years old, where my brain was a little sponge. And I was kind of trying to work out who I was and learning who, who I was and how I functioned. And that from that point onwards I never really questioned I was kind of all right so if I do something and I'm really bad at it if I keep doing it I'll do it and and from that point onwards everything I did I got to a level at. and I'm not saying you know I wasn't Jimi Hendrix on a guitar but I learned guitar to a level where people kind of went oh he can play and that's kind of all we can ask of ourselves really and so I think that you know everything I've done I've really struggled with I've been really cack-handed with it but what I have learned is because of what happened then I, I put it down to that I could be wrong but I think it is that that moment of never doubting that I've got self doubt my self belief in many different ways, but I never doubt that if I sit down and do something and I go through that, what Seth Golden again was talking about this emotional labor, this idea of sometimes doing something when you don't want to do it. And that again, you know, we, we love practicing most of us, but sometimes we don't, you know, sometimes it is something that gets a bit laborious and we go, oh, am I losing the love for it? It's like, no, that's life. You know, sometimes we, you know, I, keep my, I adore my kids, but sometimes I'm sitting with them and I just want to be on my own. It's not that, I, that's just life, you know, so sometimes, but we know we have to step up. So I think that learning this kind of a certain amount of discipline without being too militant about it is a really important thing as well. And, and this is all stuff that's really changed my life. And, 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 and just reading about it recently, it's kind of re-sparked all that stuff and re-motivated me. And, and this is, I need it at the moment because my motivation was, was lagging. Um, I've got a lot to review. I was finding it really overwhelming. That's a really another thing, you know. And it's you know, it sounds great. I've got loads of magic tricks, but it it sometimes keeps me up at night because this is p stuff that people have created. And I said I'll review it, and I see it, and I I kind of think, how am I going to get through it? So what I do is I think about the process, one thing at a time. I take it, forget about the rest, learn it. Um, and, and it's it's interesting. I was practicing with the tournament store car, which I'm going to record a review of tomorrow. And I spent a long time yesterday. It's easy, but it's but it, a long time yesterday just with it because I was trying to approach this thing of looking at the detail, looking at the subtlety. And it was, again, it created a joy that was very different from sitting and banging through it for five hours. So uh, I hope you take this. And it, this, this is stuff I put into practice. This isn't just hyperbole. It's, it, some, it's stuff that I live by on a day to day basis and it's changed my life. Um, uh, same here. I'm cripplingly shy, but practice magic so much that I could put together a decent routine in front of the right people. And if you're shy, go out easy. All right. I'm not shy, but but I am. I get. I, I'm a, I'm an introvert. I have to really push myself to try get to the cafe and try a new trick. I get super nervous. I get nervous before I'm doing this. 
it's just like over time, part of the practice is learning to deal with those nerves. They never go away, but you start learning that, oh, actually, I've got less reason to be because people are really liking this. So I think that, again, see that as part of the work, you know, developing, overcome, not overcoming that shyness, not, you know, be yourself. Don't pretend to be some sort of massive extrovert if you're not. Just be nice, you know. I see Darren Brown perform and I see he kind of communicates almost as an introvert. He's not like, ba -ba 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 -ba, you know, like Dynamo. People, and I know that people say, well, Dynamo's not a great performer. Some people do. But actually, because he is very personable and he's like a normal person, that's why people like him. So it's not about trying to be someone you're not. It's about working with what you are. Um, so, yeah, don't, you know, don't think, oh, I'm sure I can't be a magician. I know you're not saying that at all. But go out easy. Easy tricks if you're shy because you're working on the other bit as well. You're working on being in front of people. So do a self-worker. Get a prop. Don't be shy about that, all right? Don't think it's good. You've got to go out and do second deals and all that sort of thing. Um, the music magic practice idea is in the Roger, Roger Klaus book in concert. Yeah, I've got it's great. Good, thanks for that reminder, Andy. Um, you're welcome, uh, uh, not Bill Cosby. I love practicing a move that's fun to do even though it may be difficult. Absolutely, you know, it's... it's um, I don't tend to, and I'm not seeing this to be big-headed, I don't tend to think in terms of difficulty anymore. And it's not because I don't find it difficult. I look at the thing and it's in terms of do I want to learn it. And there are moves that, Pharaoh being one of them, Memdek, you know, I'm talking years, years and years before my, I could get around it. But I, ne I went out of it because I was like, I'm never going to get it. And then I stopped thinking like that and just thought, just do it. If you want it enough, it'll come. Relax, chill out and do the work. Um, Thanks, Magic Corner. I was a terrible show, show off as a child, but this day I believe I can't dance. I know, I know. I, dancing's a weird. I, oh, God, I tell me about dancing. You know, those people when you're at a party or a wedding or something, they go, come and have a dance. And you go, no, nah, no, I'm good, thanks. And they go, no, no, come and have a dance. And you go, no, I'm good, thanks. And on the third time, you start losing it. Go, get off me. I'm like that. But unless, if I'm drunk or, you know, of... Um, <laughs> I'm all right. Break dancing is not dancing. It's, it's acrobatics, by the way. You don't have to be a good dancer to break dance. Um, I want to see break dance moves next video. No, I'll be embarrassed. I'll do them one day. Uh, hey everyone, uh, Lale. I don't know if that's the pronunciation. Uh, so sorry for that. Hey, uh, Chimp, I've just ordered my first uh, CSB set with Quiver. Any ideas of routines? Now, the only CSB routine I know is Carpenter Coins. Um, so. Check that out. I thought it was nice, but there's, there's loads of sets, isn't there? I, I, I want to start looking at them, but I want a quiver as well. Oh, that, that came out in my wilderness years when I kind of got out of magic a bit. And, um, and everybody talked about it. I still haven't got one, but apparently they're great, aren't they? So it'd be silly to buy one because I've got 500 things to review. I can't handle any more magic, but no, you got me thinking. Oh, uh, Metal 5 by Eric Jones is amazing. Oh, I love the metals. That's a good thing to work through for your coin magic as well, for the real basics, you know. Um, they're good, aren't they? Uh, no, thanks. Hey, no worries. I spend quite a lot of time writing routine ideas down on paper, mind mapping, developing sequences and storylines. I think on paper, pictures as well as words. Well, that's what I've started doing, Julian, or Julian, um, because... Uh, that's what I actually doesn't come, didn't come as easy to me. I, f I put that stuff off for years and now I love it. And, and what I've started doing with the reviews, because I do want them to become a bit shorter, is I've started writing them. And I didn't write this, because I've done this, this thought a lot, but what I did do is I kind of, you know, I'm doing more of this now, just to, just to map it out so it's a little bit more palatable. And actually I think it's a great idea to do and, and something that we should all spend a lot more time on. Uh, Bungle Dino, I think that says. One of the first tricks uh, I did in front of a group of people was French Kiss. I was so nervous, but pulled it off. The spectator said, <laughs> F that. Uh, Necked off his pint. I got great feedback off others. Isn't that, isn't that just such a... That's a feeling that never goes away. And it's... I think with a lot of magic, even if it's an utter miracle... I was playing with something the other day and I was really nervous about doing it. I was thinking, if this is this as impressive as I thought it was? And you know when you get all that self-doubt and it's a very human thing and we go out and we do it and we get that, we get that response. It's just the loveliest thing, isn't it? And I think part of it's ego and there's nothing wrong with a bit of ego, but part of it's knowing that you, you literally changed someone's emotion. You changed someone's emotional state by someone you, something you did. And it's, a magic creates a, 
such a mix of emotions. It's such an unpredictable, you know, we can get silence, which can be an amazing reaction. You know, if you do something like a center therapy, some mentalism and, you, you know, you get that, you know, it, that's just as amazing. So you, 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 you do, it's, it's a profound thing really, isn't it? And, you know, comics do it and musicians do it as well. We change the way someone feels. And I think that's a, and there's something that transcends ego for me with that when i was when i started it was a bit of that it was like hey look at me and then you realize that that's unsustainable it doesn't that doesn't last you know you get used to people saying it's amazing but it's where you see that that gut punch and that's and you think that person has just experienced something that in some way has changed them and they will probably never forget and i think we we are so lucky to to have found this to be able to do that um, and again if you're a musician the same thing uh, I've never performed in front of someone I don't know. What you might find is that now that's way easier. Perform I, I salute you. If you perform in front of people you know, that terrifies me. Because there's no getting away from that. Right? It, I, I, I'll tell this story. I'm not going to tell a long version of it. But I, basically when I started doing stand-up years ago, I wasn't that good. I didn't do it for that long. But I could argue I maybe do a bit of it in my show now. But no props or anything. I did a... Um, did one show and first time ever and had a great night because I improvised, I was a street performer so I could do all the improvisation and then I invited some friends along second time and I utterly died, I absolutely died on my butt and it's something I'll never forget because I can't get away from that. Now they weren't the sort of friends that were really close friends so that they, that'd be alright, when they're cl they can kind of handle that, but they were friends I hadn't known for long. And I learned a lesson, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but I, I went back and forth, right, get your material sorted, do 20 shows before you invite someone along. And I do a show here in Sheffield, um, and I've put, just put one in, and a lot of people I know come to that show in my local area, and that utterly terrifies me. Give me 2,000 strangers in front of me, I'm fine. I'll get nervous, but I can deal with it. Give me 20 people I know, and I'm a wreck. So, you know, there's not one that's better than the other. Uh, going to have to watch again. Yeah, yeah, we'll watch it. It's, it's going to be up here. Uh, Max Maven said, magic is very profound, but a lot of magicians have uh, made it trivial. Well, the, the triviality, and I've been guilty of this, when I just forget about, about how lovely it is. You know, I really try sometimes to really remember those first times I saw something, to really remember how I felt when I first saw, first, you know, or remember exactly where I was when I saw my first coin vanish. You know, in a magic shop in Australia, in Sydney, never seen a proper coin vanish before close up because I just hadn't been in that environment and um, obviously I'd seen stuff on telly but to see it in front of me I'll never forget it and I always go back and, and consider and reflect on that and go that's what they're feeling and you know it's such a beautiful thing when you when you look at Danny's work you know it it's just you, you look at it and we know it we see it as a magician we go it's brilliant you can't see it but imagine someone seeing that for the first time and no matter what people say there isn't a lot of people lay people that have seen a lot of coin magic they might have seen the odd thing but when it's done well and even a simple vanish done well is a really amazing thing it reignites us it you know we've got to empathize with our audience and go what do, what is that like for them and and i think it's um hey see you later no worries um i think it's a great thing uh and yes, some people have made it trivial, but I think they just forget, you know, put work into it. Give it time, give it space, give that move what it deserves, the respect it deserves. Um, uh, I need, okay, I need help with picking, this is a great question. Uh, which book to read first from Adrian? Uh, I have Mark Wilson's Complete Course, The Royal Road, Bill Tarno, You See and I remember you mentioning this, and The Magic Book by Harry Lorraine. Man, you, I'll tell you what to do. This is how you decide, because it's like when I'm coaching. If I'm coaching, doing like the executive coaching stuff I do, I don't, tell, I don't advise anybody. I, we talk, and then we get them to, to, to find out what works for them. I know it sounds like a cop-out, but it's actually it's asking questions around what people... What I would do, and this is what I sometimes do, is don't get hung up on what book you read. Read the first couple of chapters of each of those books, and you will feel what one you would want to carry on with. So if you start reading Mark Wilson and you're like, I'm really enjoying this, carry on with it. If you start reading Royal Road, carry on with it. If you, get, if you start reading all of them and you're not enjoying the process, look somewhere else. You know, look, look, look for other things. Look online. Look at downloads. And I hate to say it because I'm a real book nut, as you can see, but there, it may be that you need something else to get you into it. Books, can, I, I love the idea of books at the beginning, but actually if going back to them after learning a few things off of other people that I really started getting the hang of books. So... Read 
the first bit of each of them and then it'd be lovely to hear how you got on you know feel free to email me steve at carbmagiccourse.com and let us know how you get on or come on the this show again and, and let us know um but but you know start reading each one and one of them will chime with you they've got very different feels those books um you know mark wilson it's got all that those lovely visuals but to me learning a trick's great like that but reading it and learning it isn't as enjoyable i like to read text and i like to read sort of anecdotal stuff and and some, but some people like the drier read where it's a little bit more so so I mean it's an absolute classic that Mark Wilson book it's amazing but it's a, there's almost too much in it sometimes it's kind of where do I start um, it's got that knot in it hasn't it what's it called that knot where you kind of thread the knot it's sort of granny's knot or something it's a great trick um, so and ask, ask people on the forums what they think as well it feels very boring because it seems too easy yeah I, I, mean, I mean and it isn't in a way but there is something about Mark Wilson, that I always I go back to it every now and then now, and I can learn from it now because it's, I treat it as a different thing. But it's not a there's something about how a book is written as well as what it tells you. It, it's not just about the information, what draws you in. It's the, it's the voice of the author, and some books will just do that for you. It's the teaching style. There's no right or wrong. It's just a very very preferable thing. Um, and it, yeah, it's very general, powerful, close mate. Yeah, it's. Uh, it seems Royal Road is a bit outdated, waiting for the magic book to come in the mail, and I'm liking the Bill Tarr book. Yeah, um, yes, it is It is very good, the Bill Tarr book, and things like the Harry Hay book, which I don't think you can get anymore. Um, but, you know, you're, you're looking at more than skills, you're looking at in, inspiration as well. So just, just listen to your body, listen to what your, your, your motivation is telling you. Um, I found performing to children in schools from Julian... Uh, helpful in building confidence what a great thing to do in magic music and magic yep again a brilliant thing to do and uh, don't let anybody you know get don't get caught up in the cliques that think they're just doing all the cool gigs and i'm not saying that isn't cool by the way but you know people people are a bit down on doing stuff in schools doing stuff in you know i've done gigs in old people's homes i used to be um play the keyboard and i did my first thing in old people's home and it gave me that confidence it was great and it, the look on that again they were loving it so do all these lovely things we've got the the ability to do as magicians, get out and do it and do whatever works for you and don't listen to the naysayers. Um, right, so listen, uh, I'm going to shoot. Now remember, uh, thank you very much. It, never take it for granted that you come on these shows. Come to the live one um, on Thursday at 5 and remember, leave your comments after this. This will You can view this afterwards, but there will be comments um, once this goes live. I think it will process for about 20 minutes and then it will it will be live on the, the thing. Uh, so do check out carbmagiccourse.com. Look at all the stuff you get. Check out um, Danny's stuff below. Okay, so the, the as I said, I watch Mona's, but he, he give away a free vanish, this uh, double take vanish, which is a lovely vanish. And uh, do click the link below. You, you'll see it right under the, the Carb Magic Course thing, Danny Goldsmith. And, uh, and I just thought I'd share that with you because it's a great thing. It's not just a rubbish little freebie you get just to get your email address. And... Uh, and like and subscribe. And if you like this, if you think this will be useful to anybody, please share it on social media or mention it in the forums because um, I just sometimes feel a bit self-indulgent doing too much of that stuff myself. Um, it's not laziness, I promise. And have a great one. It's been an absolute pleasure, everybody. Uh, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.